Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you my updated technique on a triplanar corneal incision with a diamond blade. So why do I think this is important? I think it provides a more stable incision. There is more stroma at the level of the incision and therefore I believe this is a stronger incision. And how do I do this? After placing viscoelastic into the eye, you want to use a cannula to stabilize the eye. You create a vertical groove about one third corneal depth at the level of the limbus. And then you want to engage the deepest part of that incision and then tunnel with the blade flat to the cornea. And once you reach the tunnel length that you want, then you puncture through th to the anterior chamber. So as you can see here, I'm filling the eye with viscoelastic and then holding the eye with the cannula, I make my vertical groove. And then I'm gonna to try to find that incision, get right to the depth of it. And then I'm tunneling flat to the cornea, making sure uh, I'm tunneling is where I want to go. And then when I'm ready to, to puncture, then I go ahead and puncture. So that happened fairly quickly. So let's show this in uh, slow motion. So this is the step where you're placing your dispersive viscoelastic in the anterior chamber after you've made all of your incisions. And so I used to use a fixation ring, but with the help of uh, a lot of colleagues on the ASCRS listserv and, and hearing what other people are doing, I chose to use a cannula instead to fixate the eye. And it does a couple of things. Well, a fixation ring, you can feel some discomfort from the prongs. And so the patient moves, you can have a subconjunctival hemorrhage or an abrasion. But with this cannula technique, uh, it's a, basically a no-touch technique and you're already in the eye with a cannula anyway. So I believe it's more efficient. I like to keep the cannula not too deep into the eye. I don't want that tip to, tip to be too close into the eye because if the patient does move suddenly, I don't want to hit the uh, anterior capsule or anything like that. So I'm using the cannula. You can see I'm pushing with the cannula so the eye is pointed a little bit away from me. I've already made my vertical groove and it's about one third depth. I find the deepest part of the incision and then I put my blade into that space and then I flatten out my blade so that I'm basically parallel with the blade to the cornea. I tunnel the blade and advance it until I reach the depth and the tunnel of cornea that I want. And then I reposition and tilt the blade so that it's a little bit more vertical and the blade is facing towards the anterior capsule. And then I advance to create my triplanar incision. So I'm going to show you more examples of this. Again, using the cannula to fill the eye with viscoelastic, holding it and stabilizing the eye with the cannula, making my vertical groove about a one-third depth, finding that deepest part of the incision, tunneling with the blade, and then re repositioning and then puncturing through. So again, that's a triplanar technique. Again, I like to hold the cannula in such a way that it's not all the way too deep into the eye uh, because if the patient does suddenly move, that I won't accidentally puncture or do something. So I like to keep the cannula a little bit just right at the tip of the incision. I would like to share a pearl. If you think the patient will tend to move, you can actually secure the eye a little bit better with the cannula by creating an orlock with the cannula to the incision. So you basically rotate the cannula counterclockwise so it twists along the incision and you'll create a little bit of tension on the incision and you'll be able to hold the eye a little, with a little bit more security. So you make your vertical groove, you tunnel, tunnel, re reposition, and then puncture through. Filling the eye with viscoelastic again, keeping that cannula tip towards the incision, making my groove, finding that deepest, deepest part of the incision, tunnel the cornea, reposition, and then puncture. So again, vertical incision, find the deepest part, perform your corneal tunnel. Once you reach where you want to go, you, you tilt, and then puncture through. And a lot of these maneuvers are quite subtle. I'm using my cannula uh, to do some of this work. Again, uh, now you'll see I'm gonna make my incision and then I'm gonna use the cannula to push the eye away from me. So then it helps me make my groove from my angle. And then I use the cannula to pull the eye toward me so that I can actually puncture. So it's again, a subtle move. You'll see the cannula move the eye. First, the eye is straight when I make my vertical groove, but then when I make my tunnel, I use the cannula to push the eye away from me a little bit, but then I'm, when I'm ready to puncture, I bring the eye back toward me again. So again, I'm using the cannula to push the eye away from me, and then when I'm ready to puncture, I use the cannula to pull the eye toward me, and then I puncture through. So I hope you see the value of creating a triplanar corneal incision. I believe it provides more stability. 
and using the cannula helps me to maneuver to be able to make my incisions and using a diamond blade makes the technique easier. So I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your attention.